What are seven of the very best questions that you can ask a man in that critical period of early dating to understand if he's a match for you and if you guys can build a relationship that lasts a lifetime? Welcome back to the channel. That's what I'm gonna be sharing in today's video. This phase before you go exclusive, I call it the non-dating phase, the no outcome needed phase, where you're vetting men, where you're getting to know men, where you're meeting new men, where you're practicing your open-hearted skills, where you're setting boundaries, this phase, is the most critical to the rest of the relationship and the rest of your life in terms of who you choose of any phase in dating. It's a little bit like getting a puppy, that first four to six weeks of training him or her, crucial for the rest of the dog's life. So you wanna get it right in dating. These dating skills have exponential leverage on the rest of your happiness. So getting this phase right means enjoying meeting new people. It means having fun in the process and it means not focusing on the outcome, practicing the skills so that you can have the outcome when the time is right, when the universe gives it to you. But it also means filtering. It also means vetting the men, asking the right questions so that you can prevent future problems. You can't do it all the first day before you've met the guy. Sometimes it takes a few weeks, sometimes it even takes a couple of months. But you wanna be asking these seven questions so that you can really get a grip on whether or not this person is actually a great, healthy person for you. Number one, very important, is what do you see your life looking like in five years? How do you see your five-year vision? With this question, what you do is you draw out a lot of values from a man about compatibility, big topic values, big ticket values that are gonna make all the difference many, many years from now. By getting this right, you prevent so many future problems because you can see them before you're too close and especially even before you become exclusive to him. With this question, you'll establish things like, does he want kids, does he not want kids? What sort of family structure is he looking to build? How does he see work-life balance between a man and a woman? What location does he see himself living in? How does he perceive his time throughout his day to look even? Religion? There's so many interesting big value topics that can come out simply by asking this very reasonable question of how do you see your life in five years? This question really does, it comes out totally natural, it's not weird, deliver it relaxed, curious tonality, and by doing so, you'll basically get an insight. It's basically like saying, tell me all the things that matter to you. What are your values? And it's done in a very eloquent way. To ask this question, yes, you can't get everything perfect with compatibility. It's true. There's always going to be areas where you're incompatible with anyone, but those are areas to be worked through. What this first question does is it helps you eliminate the big stuff. Those ones I already talked about, religion, work-life responsibilities, living location, family, kids, that type of stuff gets brought up with this question. So ask this question, how do you see yourself in five years? It's a great one that you can bring in even to the first or second date. Question number two, do you want a relationship like your parents? And if not, why not? The way we grew up determines everything. Be curious, curious, not judgy, curious about how a man grew up. I'm very curious about this with clients because when I'm noticing patterns that you or clients might have, I want to know if it relates to your upbringing and if so, how so. If I hear that a client had a mother that always walked all over her, always told her what to do, or maybe the opposite, was very depressed was extremely needy, couldn't meet her own needs, then I know that it's likely that the child is gonna have a more avoidant pattern in her relationships. If that child then grows up and becomes one of my clients, I'm keeping an eye out for any of those avoidant tendencies where instead of setting a healthy boundary, that client might just pull away from a guy or pull away from a relationship. You can use this same knowledge, again, not to judge men, but to take measurements of what their relationship skill deficits could potentially be and keep an eye out for those. If someone says, oh yeah, I want a relationship just like my parents, exactly like my parents had, ask them why. See what they talk about. If they say something like, well, you know, no matter how toxic it was or no matter how bad it was, they always stuck together. That's the one thing that I value the most then you know that that person's probably gonna have some blocks around bringing up healthy relationship skills. 
On the other hand, if they give an answer like, well, you know, my parents, they had their issues, but they always worked through them. They always paused to understand one another, and they always took the time to come back together and apologize, even when they'd been really mean to each other. That signals that there's some good in what they've been modeled and what that person wants to work towards. And of course, if the person says, no way, no thanks, no how, I would never want a relationship like my parents, then you can be curious about why. Do they just say, you know what, mum and dad were toxic people and I want nothing to do with them? That may be a good thing, but you might need to note that there could be a lack of understanding as to why and what exactly caused that. With one of the future questions, you can be more curious about that and bring more awareness to that. But if they're able to say, you know, my mum and dad had a really poor conflict pattern, mum really struggled to set boundaries with dad, or dad really struggled to set boundaries with mum, there wasn't a lot of healthy communication in conflict, there was name calling and defensiveness on both sides. If it looks like the person has awareness around why their parents' relationship didn't work, now you've got some great insight as to, okay, this is someone who's thought about relationships, maybe done work on relationships, and they're modeling intentionally away from what they saw to something that's healthier, and they're likely to want to be your teammate in doing that, which is a really great green flag. So I love this question, do you want a relationship like your parents, and if not, why not? It brings out a lot of information about someone's upbringing, gives you insights as to where that person could go wrong and helps you understand what they, in their vision, are working towards for their ideal relationship. Which segues well into question number three. And the question is, how do you feel about relationship conflict? How, what's your general perception of relationship conflict? What you're looking for here is an answer with some insight. If a person says something like, I hate conflict. I would never do conflict. My parents had lots of conflict and I want none in my life. I don't want any drama. Those types of answers are orange or red flags because at the end of the day, your relationship is only ever gonna be as good as your conflict. You can be in love, you can have all the feelings, you can have met your soulmate, you can be totally compatible, but if you suck at conflict, your relationship's gonna suck as well. It's gonna become toxic and it's gonna divorce or be extremely stagnant and horrible. So this question about the perception of conflict, it's really the one skill that matters. And so we're asking the man here with this question about, well, what's your general thoughts on this topic? If it's totally, I want nothing to do with that topic, get rid of it, I want it out of here, don't give me any conflict ever. <sighs> That's gonna be a big red flag. If the person says, you know, I really wanna do conflict right, I wanna learn how to do conflict, I wanna make sure it's done maturely, I wanna do it like my parents did, in which case you can ask how, I wanna not do it like my parents did, in which case you can ask how. Getting a feel for how someone perceives conflict, how a man perceives conflict, that's gonna be one of the biggest leverage points that you can possibly have to tell very early on if this guy is likely to be someone you can grow healthy with versus if someone, eh, no, as soon as you guys have a problem, the conflict's not gonna happen and you're gonna go downhill. Now, of course, actions speak louder than words with conflict. You need to see him solve conflicts with you, but at least getting his opinion on it, his verbal opinion at the start, gives you a good starting point to understand his relationship to conflict. Number four, one of my favorite questions and a nice light one. What are the ideal traits you look for in a woman? Now, it might sound like, but there's a lot of insight to be gained about a man's values from this question as well. There's different levels of answers that you can expect with this question. The most superficial level is physical answers. This is what you don't want to hear. What are you most looking for in a woman? Oh, I'm looking for someone with a great smile, beautiful eyes, you know, lovely blonde hair, just like you have. Those superficial answers give me the cringe. They're not good. You don't want to hear those because it shows that a man really hasn't thought about any of the deep stuff of what he's actually looking for. That's how a narcissist is going to answer. That's how someone who's really just looking for a prize, a trophy is going to answer. So anything really superficial like that, you can smile and say, oh, okay, that's nice. Well, I'm glad I have that. Still, it's not gonna be a good thing behind the scenes. In the back of your mind, you should be thinking, oh, probably not going on another date with this guy. The more common answer you'll get though is the second level down, which is emotional traits. Answers that sound something like, oh, you know, I really want a woman who's loving who's caring, who's authentic, who's honest, who's genuine. All of these emotional characteristics that, look, they're great, they're pretty good, 
but they lack a little depth. They're the kind of answers that we can all give and they sound good, but it also indicates someone hasn't really thought about it a ton. They're not terrible. And you can explore the question more when a guy says this by asking the follow-up question, what do you mean by that? When you say loving, what do you mean by that? When you say genuine, what do you mean by that? And if the answer you get to that second question is just kind of a shrug, like, oh, you know, I don't know, just like really nice, really caring. If he says genuine, oh, I don't know, just like acts like itself and yeah, it's a cool chick. Those answers that lack depth, I wouldn't call it a red flag. I would call it somewhere between orange and yellow. You'll have to see how he treats you and how he shows up for you. The concern there is he hasn't thought a lot about character traits in depth. And with that being the case, he probably hasn't thought a lot about relationships in depth and it could lead to problems later down the line. The real answer, the best answer that you want to hear from this is character traits. And you can usually hear these by him describing some kind of action associated with it. So let's say you ask, what are your ideal traits that you're looking for in a woman? And he says something like, you know, I'm looking for a woman that works on the relationship with me. I'm looking for a woman that's really dedicated and, you know, shows it by showing up. I'm looking for a woman that is really mature when she does conflict. Or I'm looking for a woman who keeps her heart open even when it's difficult for her. We're looking for traits that indicate strength of character here, a certain consideration for the underlying confidence that's required to do those things. It's one thing to just say, yeah, I want someone genuine. But it's quite another to say, you know what, I want someone who really works hard to figure out who she is and communicate it with me. That's a real turn on. If you hear an answer like that, you've got a green flag because you've got a man there in front of you who's really considered, okay, what actually makes a relationship work? He's probably had relationships that don't work. He's probably been with some beautiful woman than when he, when he was 20 or 25 and looking for more superficial traits, realized that those things don't matter. And now he's thinking more in depth about the problem of finding a great woman, which is what you want. You want that green light of him saying, you know what, these are the actions that actually matter and the character behind those actions. So if you're hearing actions that relate to my ideal trait in a woman is her character, the way she shows up and does X, the way she looks at a situation and does Y, the way she takes action on Z, those are the best types of answers that you get or can receive when a man, when you ask a man, sorry, what are the ideal traits that you would love to find in a woman? Having fun on this video. Okay, number five. This is a tricky one to ask, and you probably don't want to ask this one on a first date. It'll come off very interviewee. This is more like a fourth, fifth, maybe sixth, pick the moment type of question. And the question is, if I asked your ex, what would she say are your worst traits? And which ones do you agree with? This is a difficult question to answer, and it's definitely going to send a man into the tank and thinking, oh, geez, wow, that, that kind of came out of nowhere. So again, you want to pick your pick your moment with this one. I'm, I don't think you're in the middle of eating your chips. You're going, oh, look at that cute bird. By the way, what would your ex say about you that sucks? And do you agree? Pick your moment with this one. You can maybe play a question game where you have a little competition, you go to an arcade or you people watch or something, you have a little competition and you make an agreement that you can ask each other one difficult question if you win. So pick your moment. But this question, I absolutely love it because if someone dismisses it or if someone's completely able to an un unable to answer, it shows a complete and total lack of self-awareness. And self-awareness is not the change, but self-awareness is the door to change. Being self-aware is not going to change you, but you need it to start changing you, if that makes sense. So if someone says, oh, I don't know, wasn't really my fault. She just, she'd probably say, I don't know, I was, I was selfish, but actually she was a selfish one. Or maybe it's a little more subtle. Maybe he says, nah, you know, she just kind of had a lot of, a lot of drama and um, she just put a lot of that on me for like three years and I just had enough in the end. It shows a lack of awareness for what his part in the situation was. And that should be concerning because you want someone who's going to be self-aware and is able to see their part in any situation. If someone is unable to admit any fault, if someone is unable to see that they had a part in what happens in their life, 
I was literally on the phone uh, with a woman a little while back and I said to her, look, you've got to take responsibility for your life. There's a pattern here and you're the common denominator. And she said, Mark, that's very offensive. You should never say that to a woman. And I felt bad for hurting her feelings, but it's true. If any of us, man, woman, if we can't take responsibility for our lives, then we're always going to be powerless. So what you want to hear when you ask this question is, first of all, some awareness around the situation of maybe what he could have done wrong or improved on or where he maybe wasn't right. And then the best part you can really hope for, if you can get it, is a little bit of admitting of fault, which is saying, you know what? The bit that I agree with was this. This is where I was wrong. This is where I didn't do such a good job. This is where I need to improve. And that alone is a powerful indicator of a man's self-worth. Because just being able to admit fault, being able to admit you made a mistake, being able to admit you weren't perfect in a situation shows that he has a healthy enough self-worth to not essentially personalize everything. You can project that forward to say that it's likely in situations with you, he will probably be able to do something similar, as in take some responsibility, see what his part is and work with you to fix it. If he's also able to say, yes, I've been working on these traits, then hopefully he's improved them too by the time he's met you. So you won't, you'll get a kind of improved version compared to the man he was when he was with his ex. So really green flag if he can answer that question well. If he's dismissive, has no idea, seems completely unaware. Oh, I don't know if I'd be taking another date with that man. Number six, simple one. Would you ever see a relationship coach or psychologist? Have you, or would you ever see a relationship coach or psychologist? You're not judging him on whether or not he has in the past. You're more listening for his curiousness about the potential. If he's extremely dismissive, if he feels judge, if it feels like he's judgmental of the whole idea, if you get a total, oh, I would never do that. That's who would do that? Only broken couples would ever do that. Ugh. Now, if he gives a more gray area answer, like, look, I would hope I never need to. It would definitely be a hit to the ego to ever have to do that. But I guess if I really felt it was necessary, I would do it. You know, that might be okay. You're going to have to feel out the rest of his traits if he says something like that. But if he's completely against it to the point where it seems like he would judge those who do it, that would be an immediate red flag recommendation for me and a clear signal not to take another date. Even quite large problems, whether they're compatibility or conflict or otherwise, can be resolved by two people who are willing to work on it, and especially two people who are willing to seek professional help and work on it. On the other hand, you can have quite minor differences that grind and build up over the years. And if you don't have a man who's willing to sit down with someone ideally and work on it with you, then that small stone is basically going to take you out. So it's sort of the one thing that can fix all the other things is, are you willing to, or would you be willing at some point, if necessary, to see a coach or therapist? If you get judgmental or hard no answers, I would be strongly recommending you pull back from that connection. Um, and last, this is kind of a fun one, this last question. It's probably not quite as insightful as the other six, but I really like it and good answers can absolutely come from it. The question is, if your life was a book, what would this chapter be called? As in, what chapter would this year, I'm sorry, be called? And it'll make a man stop and think this question about where he's at in life and what he's doing right now. I was thinking about this question before I filmed this video about how I would answer. What would this chapter in my life, if someone asked me this question right now, be called? And I realized I would call this chapter, as in this year, Phoenix. I can't help but think of that scene in Harry Potter where he sees that phoenix and it's kind of, it's, it's actually a little, little bad looking. It's unhealthy. It's not doing real well. And then, and then it burns down and it's reborn as this beautiful bird a couple of scenes later. And that's been a lot of my 2024, actually. I've had a lot of identity shifts this year. I've had to become a dad. Well, I chose to become a dad, of course. I've become a dad. I've had to take on the responsibility of being a dad. Uh, there's been a lot of other personal changes that have happened. I've moved over to New York, so I'm a lot further than from family and friends that I wanted to have been. And of course, not being able to get out as much has affected 
me in terms of I'm not able to be as extroverted as I'm used to being and I'm not even able to go to the gym as much currently. So there's been a lot of tough things that I've been working through in my own life. And I really feel like I'm going through a rebirth phase with new content for you guys, new content for clients, really rebuilding out the brand and the business and myself as a dad and my body and my friendship circle. And so this year for me, it's it's rebuilding a lot of things. It's kind of there was stuff that didn't go so well for a while and wasn't really the way I wanted it to be. And I had to suffer. There was been, I would say there's been more days this year where I've had really mentally tough days than any year I can remember in my life any year I can remember. And when I look at why as the things I just described, it's it's pretty obvious. So for me, it's very much been a rebirth year. And for that reason, I would call this year the Phoenix. So hopefully that answer was interesting for you. And you can see if you ask a guy that question in the, in the right place, that's a second, third, fourth date question. You could even bring it into a first date. You'll get a glimpse as to where he's at, what's important to him right now and how he's feeling about his life. Those are the seven questions that you can ask a man to have great, intellectual, interesting, first, third, second, fourth, sixth date conversations. And best of all, while you're having fun, while you're not chasing an outcome, and while you're learning dating and relationship skills, you're getting wonderful insights into whether a man has long-term potential to be a great partner. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have more subscribers on the channel. So click the button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for viewing. I really appreciate you. If you want to book in with me or if you want to get free dating advice, there is a link underneath the video and I'll see you in the next one very soon.